We all know the history of the occupation of Germany, which was split into four occupation zones and remained divided until 1989 and where differences between East and West are still omnipresent today. Austria was also divided between the Allies after the Second World War, yet the country developed very differently. After a relatively short time, the occupation statute was completely dissolved and Austria was fully reunified. There was no division into East and West and the country was able to grow together again very quickly. But why was history so totally different in Germany's neighboring country and why did the Allies treat Austria so differently from Germany? We look at all these questions in today's video. Have fun! The Second World War also ended in Austria with the unconditional surrender of the German Wehrmacht on May 8, 1945. About a month earlier, the Red Army was able to conquer Vienna and the Western Allies were able to advance into the heartland from the south and west. However, even before the end of the war, a provisional government was formed in Austria, which called for the restoration of the Republic of Austria. Although the new government acknowledged that Austria had a responsibility before participating in the war alongside Hitler's Germany, it insisted on the Moscow Declaration of the Allies. This stated that Austria was the first free country to fall victim to Hitler's policy of aggression. However, the victim myth concealed the fact that the majority of Austrians celebrated the Nazis as liberators and that the Anschluss did not involve any real resistance. However, the Allies' declaration made it clear early on that Austria would be treated very differently to Germany. It was stipulated that Austria would exist as an independent state after the end of the war. It was only to be occupied and administered by the Allies during a short transitional phase after the war. The British were the only ones to regard Austria as an enemy state at all, for the other Allies it was a special case. Although it was not later defined as a victorious power like other liberated states, it was also not treated in the same way as Germany. Nevertheless, it was also initially divided into four occupation zones. The eastern federal states went to the Soviet Union, the southern ones to the British, the western ones to the French and the rest to the Americans. Like Berlin, the capital Vienna was also divided into four zones. Only the first district was jointly administered by all of them. However, the Austrian government was very keen from the outset to abolish the occupation statute as quickly as possible. Negotiations on the restoration of full sovereignty began as early as 1947. However, the Austrians initially had no say in the matter. Even though the Austrian population expected a rapid breakthrough, the negotiations dragged on due to differences of opinion between the Allies. The Soviet Union in particular was opposed. It supported the territorial claims that Yugoslavia made against Austria. It was only when Tito and Stalin broke up in 1948 that the Soviet Union also recognized the border as it had existed until the Anschluss to the German Reich in 1938. A short time later, however, there was a further interruption in negotiations as the Cold War became ever more present and the power blocs became increasingly hostile towards each other. It was not until 1954 that a breakthrough was achieved, when Austria offered to remain free of political alliances and to defend its neutrality. As the division between East and West could already be seen in Germany, this seemed to be a suitable solution for all sides. The Soviet Union wanted an unconditional guarantee that Austria would not join NATO. And the Western Allies saw a good chance of integrating Austria into the West despite its neutrality. This led to the signing of the Moscow Memorandum in 1955, in which Austria committed itself to permanent neutrality and in return regained full sovereignty. The Austrian foreign minister even managed to win the negotiations as the preamble to the treaty, which was initially intended to underline Austria's shared responsibility for the war, was deleted at short notice. He argued that the clause was a, a mark of guilt and burdened the a internal and external development of the young state with a moral mortgage. In this way, Austria was able to absolve itself of guilt and the only thing left to talk about was the forcible annexation of Austria by Hitler's Germany. The treaty finally came into force in July 1955 and the Allies had to withdraw completely within 90 days. Austria was fully sovereign again from October 26 and this day is still considered a national holiday today.